Well, thank you again for coming at short notice, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as we said from the outset, the paramount consideration in our decision-making process has always been the safety and the health of our players. Unfortunately, that's taken a dramatic turn today. Our pandemic expert and our biosecurity expert has said due to the rapid rate of infection that we can no longer guarantee the safety of our players. Accordingly, we are suspending the season. <laughs> and we, we believe now on the 28th of May it is safe for us to return and it's safe for the players and definitely safe for the community. Beautiful scenes. It's great to be back in Newcastle where they love their footy. That'll be it! Newcastle hang on! At full time, Newcastle 26, Manly 24. So far, 2020 has been about all of us. As the final series approaches, now is the perfect time to look back and reflect. Reflect on the journey that has led us here. Tamworth, December 2019. This is the part of the training camp you didn't see. It could be said that this is the part that defined us. This is the lost footage. As the old saying goes, there's no substitute for hard work. And there was plenty of that on this camp. For six days, the players were pressed to their limits, physically and mentally. It was here that the Knights set the tone for the team. The team they want to be. The team they need to be. I was shocked, like, I don't know, if you just like take a look, it, it's crazy, like the heat, there's not, there's no coastal breeze, there's nothing, and then there's smoke, and um, the heat's bouncing off the grass as well, and it's, um, it's a different kind of heat, it's a dry heat, and it would be hard to get used to, but um, it was good, it was made every session tough, and um, Adzi didn't hold back on the sessions either, he didn't want it, want it to be an excuse for us, so that was good, uh, the boys, you know, lent in, and um, we, didn't, we didn't make an excuse for us. As the smoke-filled air heats up, the players hit the paddock. Nothing quite sums up pre-season better than sweat screaming off the face. Fire, haze and fitness, what a combination. You can see the hurt on their faces, but there's no quitting. The players have been looked after, but, but, but... You know, talk about air quality, um, you look, it has been a bit smoky and I think the last day, as in today, has been, um, been probably our worst. Uh, but, you know, the players, to their credit, have just uh, carried on uh, and, you know, uh, as Adam would call it, leaned in and, and um, made sure that, they, that, that we finished our training sessions and got the job done. With the moonlight overhead, it's 4am and the boys are up for breakfast. It's an early start on the field, but the temperature is rising quickly. I'll never forget this town and the experience I've had this year and hopefully we get to come back every year and show the boys um, you know, the lessons we've learned over the years. For assistant coach David Ferner, this camp is an opportunity to get creative outside of the usual pre-season grind. We've still got one more up our sleeve. Uh, we are heading home today, but uh, interesting, interesting enough, the, uh, the players are just gonna have to work out or not work out that uh, something might happen. It's now Saturday, and the players think camp is over. Oh, 
Reflecting on the trip, Kirkman leaves Tenworth with a greater appreciation for the country folk doing it tough. We're, we're not doing it as tough as, as what some of the people are around here. Um, when we go to training, we sort of know when the end when the end's inside of training and how long our game's going to go for. The people, you know, the farmers around here, they don't know how long this drought's going to go for and stuff. So I think they're doing it a lot, lot harder and a lot tougher than us. The hardship and resilience endured by the Tenworth locals was a stark reality check for the squad. Little do they know, there's one more stop to go. The bus is pulling into my hometown of Aberdeen, where I'm waiting to speak with the team. You boys have put in a lot this week, and um, yeah, it's a pleasure to be able to sit here in front of you guys today and have a bit of a chat. Um, you all know my story. It's, um, it's been everywhere. Um, but a lot of the struggles that I faced my own self were initially in the beginning when I returned back to Newcastle after I got injured. When I come back to Newcastle, the people that picked me up were the club. Um, it was the fans and it was the genuine community around Newcastle. They consistently asked me how I was going. They consistently asked, do I need any help? Um, it's been six years now, boys, and they can, they're, they're still doing the same thing. Um, initially, I was embarrassed by it because I hated help. I hated it. I hate, if I dropped my phone, I wouldn't even want anyone to pick it up. I'd just leave it. I just hated people helping me. Um, but as time went on, I began to recognise that our community is one that wants to support and they want to give back. And we're a club that speaks community. We talk about giving back. Um, we talk about being the best that we can be. They're a true example of it, boys. And for me, my motivation, it comes from being able to provide back to them. You guys win, we win, we give back to the community. That's it. That's all I want, that's all I want to do. Um, that's my motivation every time I go into the office, is to genuinely give back to the community that gave me everything when I had nothing. I can help you as much as we can, everybody else can. If you guys trust the football department, you trust the club is doing everything for you guys, the decision comes back to you. Um, thank you.